Welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to try and address some of the frequently asked questions I get on steak and as you can imagine there are quite a few. So I thought instead of going through every single comment for you guys and I try to answer as many comments as I can, you could just watch this video and then you can have all of the frequently asked questions that I get and then you can get the answers and that seems like the most obvious and easiest thing to do. So. Let's get into it. I must say that this is purely for entertainment purposes. It's not financial advice. It's also my opinion. So take from that what you will. And if you haven't heard of Stake, it's a real estate investment platform that allows you to invest fractionally, which means you can invest from as little as $50 into real estate. So yeah, let's get into the questions. Let's start from the beginning and getting money in there. So how do you get money in there? And someone, and quite a few of you have asked about the different foreign exchange because they deal in AED, which is the you know dirhams for the area. But most of us don't. So if you are not being smart with the way that you get money in there, you will be charged foreign exchange fees with that as well. Not by state, but from your bank. So if you try and, you've got a Euro account like myself, if you try and add dirhams from that, you get whatever your bank decides is worth. And it's never very good. So I use, I use Revolut. Revolut is what I use pretty much as my main bank these days. That's, I have to have a French account for other reasons, but I do use my Revolut account for most things, which means that I can either do the exchange before on my Revolut account to AED and then transfer it in, or I can just purely do it from Euros and it does the exchange for me and it gives me a way better rate than most banks do. So that's the way I get around it. You can also use services like Wise or other international payment providers that specialize in reducing the foreign exchange fees. So that's what I would 100% recommend. If you're not natively in AED, you try and find one of these services, otherwise you will get stung with fees and we don't want that. Another question on getting money in there is a lot of people ask, how do I get money in there? And the best way is obviously bank transfer. If you do a bank transfer, it's super easy using one of the services I just mentioned. So don't do it from your standard bank, use it Wise or Revolut, something like that. That is the cheapest way to get money in there. Or you can use a debit card as well from that account. The law states that you cannot use a credit card for these sorts of things because it's a regulated entity. You cannot use and invest using borrowed money. That's just the way that it works. So you have to use a debit card. But the fees for using a debit card on stake are free. So there are no fees if you want to use a debit card or bank transfer. Debit card is obviously instant, choose what you like. I use my Revolut debit card, again, just because it's easy and the cheapest way for me to do it. And most importantly, it's quick, because I like the speed. Next, a lot of people ask me, what are the fees? Like, how much I invest, like how much more than that in the fees, etc., etc. The great thing I like about Stake anyway is that the amount you pay is, is everything all included. It's baked into that price. So if you invest a thousand dollars, a thousand AED, whatever that might be, that's everything included. That's everything. Because the way that they structure it is they put their acquisition cost, so the charges associated with them going off purchasing the property in the first place. That's all baked in, that's one and a half percent, but that's baked into the total cost of the property. And then there's an annual fee of 0.5%. Um, and yeah, all of these are baked into the costs and baked into what you get back. So that's all included. What you get back, simple, done. No fees on top of that, they're all included. And when they sell the property, which I'll come on to more in the end when I come to talk about returns, there is a two and a half percent fee baked into that. So that's all done as well, but that's taken before it's distributed to you. So again, you don't have to worry about working out because that's all a part of what they're doing and you don't have to worry. That's another one as well. People ask me all the time about selling. So either selling the property or the returns on the selling. And so the structure is quite simple. You can liquidate your shares. Your shares are literal shares in this property. So you own a part of this entire apartment, however much that may be. If you invest in $50 or $100,000, you still own a number of shares of this property. And they try and maximize the return on that investment by trying to sell at the right time. So they won't be selling those properties after two months because 
it makes zero sense to do that. So sometimes they have occasions where it makes sense to sell them after 18 months because they have a really good offer. When they get an offer, they put that offer to you, us as shareholders, then we have to vote on that. If you have owned a property within stake already, you might have had to vote on some things already, which is the change of, I've voted on a number of times in changing companies. So they have companies that manage the properties for them and there are different scenarios that they set out and give you a full breakdown of the different costs, what it means to you, how much more beneficial it will be to you and you get to vote on those. It's exactly the same when it comes to selling a property as well. If they get a really good offer, that's good for you guys, then they will get all the shareholders to vote on it. If the vote is unanimous, then the property is then agreed to be sold. The amount is then split between all the different shareholders and the profit, and then that's where you get the appreciation back, and I'll go into the returns a bit more in a second. And if you are looking to liquidate earlier than they would like to sell the property, or they the best time to sell the property, they have two exit windows. So there's one in May and one in November. And because these they don't open it all year round because then it'll be a free for all and it wouldn't actually it would be more illiquid, it would be more difficult to do. So these two exit windows where you can transfer your shares to someone else. So if you really need to sell, you can sell in May or November. They're the two windows that they've got open. Uh, I like to buy in those because if people want to sell, I'm interested in picking up a potential bargain. Why not go for it? So you can either buy or sell within those transfer windows and that's where you can liquidate your investment. Or as I say to most people, these things are more long-term investments, so see them as such. I don't plan on selling until I get my full return, of course, and that is when the property is sold. So that takes us nicely into the next part, which is the breakdown of the returns and what that actually means. Because a lot of people have said like, oh, if I, ha like if I invest this amount, I'll only get this much back per month. That doesn't seem very good. So the fees structure is fairly simple, but a lot of people it kind of confuses because you get the dividends back from the rent. So that's the rent that you get back every single month. So once they've rented out the property or it's a holiday let, whatever, they'll divide that by the number of months or what they have cash flow, and you get that dividend back based on the number of shares you have every single month. What you don't get back, because they haven't sold the property, is the appreciation side of that. So that, if you look in your portfolio, you can see that that is actually in there. You can see the amount of appreciation you've got. And if you look down at the properties that you own, you can see how the properties have appreciated already over that time. There will be a little green figure there. You can see, I'll wake up on the screen right now so you can see an example of some of mine. And that is shown and baked into the actual returns. But you don't see that until the property and the shares are liquidated. The same if you sold a company. You wouldn't get any benefit to that until you actually sold it and then someone gave you money for those shares. This is exactly the same way. So you have to sell all of your shares in order to get the appreciation side back. So when a lot of people think, oh my God, I'm only getting this amount of dividends per month. That's because that's just purely the rent side. And the way that they calculate it is it's about roughly 5% on each. So 5% rent, 5% on appreciation per year. That's the rough calculation on what you should be looking to get back. So roughly about 10% per annum in total. But again, you won't see the end one until the property is sold. Does that make a bit more sense? I hope so. People say to me all the time, can I withdraw my monthly dividends? Yes, you, you can. You can just withdraw them back to your bank account that you associate with the, it's, it's simple, it's no problem. But I'd, I wouldn't. Like, if you've not heard of compounding, and then you probably should have, but compounding is when you're, you reinvest your money, your investments, your returns, so your dividends in this case, your rental dividends, and you reinvest those so the pot gets bigger and then what you make each month gets bigger, you know? It makes sense. So if you need that money every month, sure. But I'd also say that this probably isn't a great thing for you. I would reinvest those dividends, rental dividends, and make my lump sum that I've got invested bigger each time because it just makes sense. Like that's the power of compounding when it comes to investing. This is what I do. And I'm pretty sure they are looking at getting a reinvest feature so we can automatically do this. This is the ones, one of the things that I've been talking to them about because I have this amount sitting in there every month and I'd like it to automatically just be 
you know, invested into a property. So that's one thing I think is coming on the horizon uh, and I will try and find out exactly when and what it looks like. But that's what you can withdraw your monthly dividends, but I wouldn't, just reinvest them, it's better. I sometimes have people as well say, oh, if I invest a grand, I'm only making X amount per month, that's a shitty return, it's gonna take me 20 years to get 100% return back. But again, they're only looking at the rental dividends, they're not looking at the appreciation over that time. And also, I'd argue that if it took 20 years, that'd be a 5% return on that, that's just the maths, which isn't correct, because it should work out at roughly about 10% per annum return. But even at 10% per annum return, it's a very good return on investment. I think a lot of people have been skewed with crazy fucking meme coins on crypto or whatever that you can get a thousand percent return instantly. The biggest thing about investing in real estate is the fact that it is a solid, tangible asset that has proven to be more stable, especially than crypto for God's sake. So 10% per annum is a great return on investment. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise, because it really is. And when you use the power of compounding, as I mentioned, it is very, very good. And if you can do that over the entire years of your life, then, then that's a really good return. It, it just is. Some people say as well, what's the structure? Like how does it work in terms of an investment structure? Now, every property is bought under an SPV, so a special purpose vehicle. It allows you to create a business for that building, that property, and divide the building up into shares, much like you would a business. Special purpose vehicles can be used by anyone, pretty much around the world, in most countries that I know of. You can buy your own personal properties as well, as SPVs and there are a number of tax benefits to actually doing this. So if you're looking to buy a property, maybe an Airbnb outside of this, outside of state you want to actually invest in property, definitely look at SPVs because this is a real benefit and the reason doing it is it allows you much more flexibility, you can offset a lot of the cost, it just makes sense but from their point of view the reason they do this is because it's the best way of doing it, it's the best way of structuring it from a legal and compliant point of view as well. So that's how they structure things. So it's a company, so they don't own the company, they look after the SPV. So they are not shareholders within, unless they buy shares in it, but they are not shareholders within the property, they just manage the SPV. So they have authority over it, but they don't own shares. We own shares. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Hopefully I'm trying to answer some of these questions that I'm getting all the time and these things are useful to you. But if there are further questions as well, do let me know in the comments because new ones come up all the time. And I just wanna try and give you guys the best answers I can. So let me know if there are any new comments. Another good question is, when do I start getting dividends? What's the process behind this? And you have to understand that there is a bit of a delay between the funding ending, onboarding, people inside, rental. It's exactly the same as if you went out and bought a property and were renting it out. You would see a delay before you started getting your rental money back. It's exactly the same. A lot of people forget that it's structured in the same sort of way, that you still have to go through this sort of stuff, so expect instant delivery of dividends, but you still have to go through the process, the legal process of setting up the SPV, the whole onboarding and everything like that. So it can take a couple of months before you start getting your rental dividends back. But that is normal. I have to stress this is exactly normal. Again, it would be exactly the same if you went out and bought a property to rent out yourself. Exactly the same. And one I got recently that I haven't actually answered yet is, how can I trust you? That's a, that's a good question. I mean, my own capital's at risk here too. I have around $5,000 in stake um, at, the, at present. I put in there every single month, so I put a couple of hundred dollars every single month in there, sometimes more depending on how, how my month's been. So that's exactly what I do. I have done my own research. This is what I then give these answers and videos to you guys in the same way I'd expect you guys to do your research as well. I spent a lot of time either speaking to them, speaking to their support, on their website, trying to find as much information as I can about them. And also just through my own experiences, I've now used Stake for over a year, so 
for me, I can only go by my current experiences in how responsive they've been, uh, how my experience has been using the platform, how I've seen it evolve over just that short year as well. So I can only give you that information. You can do with that what you will. If you do not want to trust what I'm saying, that's fine. But at the same time, I am just trying to provide you guys. If I was trying to provide you guys with poor information, it really wouldn't do me any favors for these videos. So it's not in my benefit to provide you with misinformation or try and deceive you on any of these platforms. But like anything, I would encourage you to do your own research, dig in more and try and understand exactly how it works or just experience it for yourself. That's exactly what I did. I went in and I tried to just get as much information and experience it myself. And this is when I provide this sort of information to you guys. So you can take that for what it is. And if you're interested in using stake, you can use my link below. It's realtalk.business forward slash stake. You get $68 on your, off your first investment. So you can invest like for nothing really. It's pretty, pretty, pretty easy. And again, this is one of my it probably is actually my favorite real estate investment platform. I've used another, I've used a few actually now, as you can probably see from my channel. If you haven't, check out the videos and you'll be able to see them all. I will do a comparison between my experience with Stake and Smart Crowd because they're both UAE based. I think there's a nice way to do a comparison between the two. And sometimes people say to me, have you used both? Which one do you recommend? Which one's better? So I will do a comparison, like a side-by-side, -side, different features, my experience using the two platforms. I still do use Smart Crowd, just not really as much as, I, I've got about $1,000 in there versus the 5,000 that I have in stake, so I do use stake more. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully I answered a lot of the questions that you guys have. If not, like I said, I'd love to hear some more new questions and I'll be happy to try and answer those for you. Stay tuned and do consider subscribing for all the different platforms that I'm actually trying to experiment on at the moment. I've opened accounts with many different things. It just takes me a while to make sure that they are actually credible before I share them with you guys. Otherwise, stay tuned for more. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.